This is gonna be the best steak I've ever cooked. If I don't f up. So if you missed last week's video, this is Hanari beef from Japan. I'll put a link in the description so that you can go back and watch that video if you missed it, because I talked in a lot of detail. Long story short here, 840 days, grain fed. They only produce 250 cows a year. And since they're fed for 840 days, that means they've got like 600 cows at any given time. And that's it on this farm. This is incredibly rare and Thank you to Meat and Bone for providing this. It's a little expensive, so I've only got one. So I'm gonna do my best not to screw it up. But I want you guys to see this marbling. Like this is insane. And it's not just a lot of intramuscular fat. So look at this. You see that just the steak sitting out, the fat is already starting to render. See this fat renders at between 70 and 77 degrees. So basically room temperature, this liquefies, really different than that 122 degrees that we get out of like an Angus beef fat, which is why we cook stuff to medium rare. So this is gonna cook really fast and it's gonna be really hard to cook, but you know what? I've got a prime picanha roast in the refrigerator. Let me go get that so I can show you what the differences are here. Now I know this doesn't look impressive next to that. It's not going to, but it's still a pretty impressive steak. So what I'm gonna do, is uh, cut here along the grain. Matter of fact, not all of you probably know this. I actually did a video where I explained this in detail. We cut with the grain so that the last cut will be against the grain because cutting against the grain is how you make the most tender steaks. Now here you can really clearly see the grains going this way. Here you can't see them quite as clearly going this way, but this is gonna be a steak that when we're done, when we slice this one, we're slicing against the grain. When we slice this one, we're gonna slice this way against the grain, you can see there's just a huge difference in the color of the fat. You can see this is melting at room temperature. This hasn't started rendering yet, won't until we start cooking. We're gonna see a big difference. Okay, let's get to salting. We aren't gonna salt this overnight, but we are gonna salt it. Now, by the way, notice, got another new salt here. This is sal grasso. You remember our viewer who told me how to cook these and how to make these thinner? Well, he also told me to try sal grasso and it took me a little while to get it but I got it. So that's what we're using here is the actual Brazilian Churrascaria salt. And so look how thick this stuff is. This really is great big crystals of salt, almost like a finishing salt. And I'm gonna flip these over and do the other side. Now, the reason that it's important that we salt these in advance, a lot of people said, hey, I'll try salting afterwards, is because our flavor profile is just going to be the A5 Wagyu fat, a little bit of salt, and then something called the Maillard reaction. The Maillard reaction is that browning that we get on the surface of a perfectly crusted steak. And to do that, we need the surface to be really dry. So the salt and this putting it in the refrigerator is actually gonna dry out these surfaces. So I'm gonna put these in the refrigerator for an hour. In the meantime, let's go start a fire. This is Mace Windu. He's my Toscana wood-fired oven from La Piazza Wood Ovens. Now we don't want a raging fire in here. What we want is a fire that's gonna get the oven to about 400, 450 degrees. We wanna build up retained heat in the stone that's around the oven so that we're not cooking just with the temperature from the fire, but that the oven is actually able to hold the temperature and the fire's providing some flavor. So what I'm doing is building a really simple log cabin here. I'm using white oak splits. These are little splits. Now this is the closest wood that I could get to eucalyptus, which they use to cook picanha down in Brazil. But this should be able to approximate the taste that you'd get if we were cooking this over eucalyptus. Ow, you're gonna cook picanha in the wood-fired oven? This is madness. This is Sparta! Now I'm just gonna move the end iron and the fire over to the side, right in the middle of the side here. I'm gonna open up the chimney so that the heat goes up and the smoke can come out. And then I'm just gonna close the oven door so we can come up to temperature. So this is feeling nice and hot. Let's take a measurement and see if we're up there in that six, 700 degrees. 
Look at that, 650. So we are right between six and 700 degrees. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and put in our cast iron plancha. We don't wanna cook the steaks on the surface like we were cooking a pizza. We're gonna cook them on cast iron. That's gonna get hot and it's gonna keep the heat evenly distributed across there. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this preheat and get up to that same six or 700 degrees that the oven's at, and then it'll be time to cook. Okay, let's take a look. 630 degrees, I'd say that's between six and 700. Okay, so here's our program. We're cooking on the plancha the whole time. Now, the Wagyu steak has plenty of fat that's gonna render when it hits the plancha, but the other one doesn't. So we're gonna go ahead and use Wagyu tallow across the plancha. Now this has got a super high smoke point. The Wagyu tallow's 520 degrees smoke point. So while I'm getting a little bit of smoke because I'm hotter than that, I'm still not gonna burn. The steaks are gonna go on 30 seconds aside. Then we're gonna flip them. We're just gonna get that Maillard reaction, but the rest of them, we wanna leave as rare as we can. All right, Nick, do I still have to pay you a salary if you get to taste this stuff? Short answer, yes. Yes, okay, all right, I think that's fair enough, I mean, all right. Though at the same time, I feel like I'm like on the set of like a Kill Bill set, what is this? There you it's go. It's like a samurai well, it's sword. a Japanese uh, <laughs> A5 Wagyu, this Hanari from Eat and Bone. I so you went with a Japanese uh, yeah, well, sword. Looking, yeah, absolutely, right? This is the one, uh, you remember, actually the first video that you shot the with me first video was, was in Austin with Bradley Robinson with Chef's yep. Barbecue, and we gave him one of those, right? And we chopped even more preposterous things with that, which were little sausages. Little sausages <laughs> and choice or select brisket yep. to make sausages. Yep. Yeah, so all right, the good memories, right? Yep. All it right, was. so here's what I need from you, what they need from you, all right? Okay. So you've tasted this, but cooked on the grill, right? I have, yeah. So we did the reverse sear versus the skewer. We all agreed reverse sear. Then we did the Arthur method, like yeah. this over there. Hands down. Hands better. down better than the skewers, never yep. doing the rotisserie again. And uh, so this is the first time we're doing wood oven, right? Yep. So I need to know how this compares wood oven versus the grill, okay. right? And then what do you notice? Obviously this is gonna be better, but <laughs> yeah, what do you no notice, right? What do you notice about it Okay. to quantify? Cause you know what, like YouTubers, like guys like me, oh, it's so good, but yep. you're so, so, you know. This is right. something new for me. Ultimately. And you're a Marine, so you wouldn't lie to them, right? Um, I would not. Thank you for your service, by the way. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right, so. Let's uh, let's take this one first. So right. remember, we cut against the grain, right? So, yeah, not having any trouble slicing this. Notice that this is rare, by the way, as compared Super to rare. the stuff that you tasted before. So that's going to be a little bit different. All right, let's all right. You want that finish. one? All right. I'm going to give here. This one's for you guys. You guys take that one. I'll take this one. That one will be for my girlfriend who's offset but doesn't there want to be go. on camera. Okay. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Cheers. 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 All right, so it is rare, but man, it is packing a lot of flavor. I really like that Saul Grosso that you put into there. Yes, thank you for that recommendation. Yeah, Arthur, that was, Arthur, that was fantastic. And right. I'm not gonna lie that even though that thing was in there for like 60 seconds, like max, I can actually taste the wood in so, that. So you would not do this cast iron in an oven? No, if you don't have the wood, cast iron's cast iron. I'm tossing it onto my stove, getting it rip roaring hot. Right. Tossing the Wagyu tallow on like last second then. But you've had steak done in an oven. Yes. You can. T I, I taste the wood. I taste the wood. Right. I can taste that it was, uh, had a little bit of that white oak kind of like different flavor that was going on that's not really pecan or cherry that you usually get. So I that bet, was a really good addition I too. I bet it would be good with that eucalyptus if we could ever find it. Yeah, right, I mean, you know, send it our way, Arthur, if you wanna like give us a little extra or something like yeah, that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, are you ready for this? I, I don't know if I'm ready, but I'm ready. All right, well, you saw what it looked like before. Oh my goodness. Oh man, that fat <laughs> has rendered. There we go. You got your headphones in. 
Uh, yeah, well, it's so that I can actually hear the audio, which is a little crazy because I can hear you and then I can hear you through there and then Weird. I can hear me through there. So it's absolute yeah. chaos. So if you're new here, by the way, Nick is the cinematographer. All those crazy shots, <laughs> that's all him. And uh, I, I, he gets paid, but he also gets this. But anyway, yeah. so you remember all that marbling that we saw. So it's all rendered like just that low temperature renders. All right. Cheers. 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 <laughs> it's right. honestly not comparable there is a massive difference there's no comparison yeah so the fat is just like butter it's just gooing i mean it's it's just ripping apart my mouth it's almost like i don't need to chew man that is just a whole different animal for sure well literally literally a it's a different animal, animal but yeah so like obviously it was going to be better oh yeah Still taste the wood. Oh, you can taste the wood. You can taste the salt. You can feel the like fat is just like falling apart in your mouth. But the flavor of that fat, the flavor of that Wagyu beef. Oh yeah. Guys, if you, like it's not cheap. If you can afford it, yeah. you should get one of these. I'll put a link in the description. Do like a group of friends that all want to taste it, split it together yeah, everybody and just have chip a little in, tasting right? like I mean, this. it's not horrific. It's not a no. mortgage payment, but it's more than a steak would cost. But it's, you know, it's something you should try at least once in your life, maybe twice or three times. Yeah, absolutely. As many times as you want to order these from Meat and Bone, I'm willing to try it for yes. you. Yes, <laughs> I'm going to say this is this is ridiculous. Yeah. It's, by the way, not the hardest cook of a steak I've done in that oven. Like, remember no. that ribeye cap? Oh, my gosh. You know what? If you haven't seen it, you should watch that one next. I'll put it, show them where it's going to be. Watch that video next where I made these ribeye cap steaks, the king of steaks. Absolutely yep. unbelievable. What about that black and blue one? Is that one right there? The black and blue one will go down <laughs> there, and we'll see you next week on Eat, Eat More, More Vegans. Vegans.